Welcome to Morning Devotion. I'm Vicar Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. A question uh, came up in in uh, class this this week and uh, generated a lot of discussion. If you had a chance to talk to someone about suffering, what would you want to say? Uh, what would be all the main points that you would want to make sure they know that the Bible says that that God says about the suffering that we experience in this life? Well, the, the first thing first thing is that we should expect it, right? There's nothing about being a Christian that would suggest that we just don't need to suffer anymore. Uh, in fact, Jesus said that we should expect more suffering as a result of being a Christian. In John 16, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So now maybe then we read in the Psalms about God being our refuge and our strength and our, our fortress and the one who defends us from all danger, and yet trouble comes to us and hardship comes to us and 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 pain and and suffering and how is that possible if, if this is our fortress? Uh, if God is our fortress, if God is our refuge and strength. So what do we say about all that trouble? When I was young, I remember being taught explicitly that that um, yes there's hardship in the world yes there's sickness and natural disaster and suffering but we should never say that it's god's doing god is good and so only good things come from him so when something happens that causes suffering we should say things like not not that god did this but that god allowed it to happen and now maybe that's familiar to you and maybe on the surface it seems like speaking in such a way is to confess that God really is only good all the time but it's not really a very satisfactory explanation for suffering is it because practically speaking what's the difference God is all-powerful and he can do anything and whatever trouble might come my way God has the ability to stop it if you and I are playing catch and you throw the baseball to me and at the last second I instead of catching it I step aside and I allow allow the glass to smash a plate glass window well whose fault is it well I might say it's not my fault I didn't throw the ball and yet I if I had the ability to stop it and I decided not to of course it would be completely fair to lay the blame on me so what do we say about suffering does God allow it? Does God send it? Does it make a difference? Now, even more than that, the Bible actually speaks pretty clearly on this, that suffering, in fact, can and does come from God. In Hebrews 12, 6, we read, The Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. He disciplines he punishes, but never because of anger or neglect. For the Christian, all suffering comes from his fatherly love and never as a penalty for sin. And we read that in Romans 8. The first verse in that chapter, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Another uh, another example of that is in John 9, when the disciples asked Jesus, uh, when, uh, upon seeing a a blind man, they said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So it was actually for that man's good that he would see God's glory, and it's for our good that we would see God's glory, the work of God being displayed. And so suffering actually rather than being called a bad thing we would say it's actually a good thing it's actually evidence that god loves us back to hebrews 12 the lord disciplines the one he loves 
God is treating you as his children. It goes on to say, For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. And then another reason goes uh, comes from 1 Peter chapter 1. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So suffering is evidence that God loves us, and suffering actually helps us to refine our faith. And maybe our response to that thought is, well, yeah, but if there weren't so much suffering and so much evil and, and trouble in this life, maybe I wouldn't even need such pure faith. Well, let me put it this way then. If in this world we were to experience no suffering, I have a feeling that we would probably end up loving this world a little bit too much. If in my life I didn't see and feel and experience the fallenness of creation and the consequence of the corruption of sin, well, then what use would I even have for Jesus? Now, I may not always be able to point to a specific good that comes from each specific hardship in your or my life, but I can say this, that suffering is meant for our good. It's meant to loosen our grip on this world that we would seek God that we would see him as our only refuge and our only comfort and our only hope and our only desire. Uh, we read uh, Paul's response when he suffered. He wrote about it in 2 Corinthians 12. He said, In order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So the more we suffer, the more we, the, the less we depend on ourselves, the more we depend on our Lord. And so the difference for us, for Christians, is this, is that we know that suffering is not pointless. Suffering isn't just for suffering's sake, and it's not suffering that just leads to more suffering. In 2 Corinthians 4, we read, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And so what do, you, what do we do? Paul goes on to say, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. He went even further in Romans 5. We glory in our sufferings. And he says, because suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character produces hope. And then he says, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, just at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And so for the problems of today, whether big or small, whether your pain is temporary or chronic, whether your grief is recent and sharp, or if it's distance, well, will it get better? Will it get worse? That I can't say. I can say that through it, God is bringing you to him. So as you d today deal with pain or with traffic or with loss or with difficult people, rejoice. There's no suffering that comes to you that is not meant for your eternal good. And we won't always know this side of eternity what that reason is. And when we get to heaven, it won't really matter anymore because when we get there, we'll be busy praising the one who brought us there. The sufferings we now experience aren't even worth comparing with what Jesus has promised for us there. Amen. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.